Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media, where we address the problems of a modern world. This is Yeshayahu, bringing it to you again. We're going to try to hit this topic. We're going to talk about the Nephilim Kaiju. And what is a Kaiju? A Kaiju is a Japanese term often associated with media featuring colossal creatures, represents a captivating subgenre of science fiction. This genre was pioneered by a visionary creators Eiji Tsuburaya and Ishiro Honda. Kaiju not only references the genre itself, but also the t- titanic monsters that characterize it, typically portrayed as wreaking havoc on major cities and confronting military forces and other monsters in epic battles. These narratives often explore themes of human resilience environmentalism and unintended consequences of scientific advancements yeah we don't know what we're messing with the nephilim kaiju are real the god species we're going to talk about it and see if you can pick up what i'm putting down the yahuwah elohim the living creatures the created messengers and the kaiju known as nephilim Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Enjoy the show most of all. And I hope you learned something. Psalms 22, verse 6. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying he trusted in Yahuwah that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. And I do. The Yahuwah Elohim, we went over this in the previous video, but I want to go over it again just so we're sure that you get it. So Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the past unto our fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, he made the worlds. And I want you to um, think that one through for a second. By whom he made the worlds. So this word, this word, his son, he makes the worlds through his son. In other words, his son is the craftsman. His, his son is on the ground building, creating. So, you know, you, you really have to really think it through. We talked about the two powers. Now, Yahweh is a term that means eternal. But when we talk about Elohim, we talk about the mighty ones, plural. And here he's telling you, by whom he made the world. So before history, the one we know as the Son made the worlds by the power of the Holy Spirit emanating from Yahweh, the Father who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, he is bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, just like Eve was bone of Adam's bone and flesh of his flesh. The two are one and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. That's two, not three. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, right? But he's talking about two creative beating beings, two eternal. In fact, when you say Yahweh Elohim, literally you're saying the eternal mighty ones, plural. Hebrews chapter one, verse four, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance ordained a more excellent name than they. Now, when they say, when he says being made, meaning being made a man, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the created Elohim of the Yahuwah Elohim worship him. John chapter 1 verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Get that. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power 
to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You, you wonder how important a name is. That theme pops up throughout the scriptures. The angel of the Lord, Moses, hear him, for my name is in him. It's important. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, the two powers. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. There it is again. The word of Yahweh the Father, meaning Yahweh the Son, made all things. And without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. See, the word became flesh. And the two in heaven are one. Just like Adam and Eve, they were created in the image of the Elohim. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, Elohim, created he him, male and female created he them. You know, that's a little tricky point there that term he, but they switch up. So you, you have to think about it. Genesis chapter two, verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. The two are one not the three. It's not Adam, Eve, and Steve. It's Adam and Eve. So this Holy Spirit, uh, when, they, when they say it as if it's a third part of the gods or the Elohim, they do you a disservice. John chapter 10, verse 29, My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. John chapter 10, verse 29. So what are they saying there? The two are one. One is in the other. And then we're going to shortly see here that the called out assembly is in the Son. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. We, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Notice Adam and Eve, bone of my bone. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And, of course, I don't like the word church. It's called out assembly, the Kodashim. Church references like a facility, a building. That's not what we want to do here. John 14, 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Think about it. He said, if he go not away, the comforter shall not come. But here he says, I will not leave, leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live ye shall live also at that day ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you he that hath my at my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him so we're talking a cup inside of a cup inside of a cup kind of thing, right? You've seen those little toys. So that was a quick rehash of the God species, the Elohim, but a specific kind of Elohim, the eternal Elohim, the Yahweh Elohim. Now, I know a lot of people are going to have problems with that, but you know what? Get over it because it's real. It's real. And you can't figure this thing out until you understand that. Psalms 22, verse 9. 
but thou art he that took me out of my uh, out of the womb thou didst make me hope when i was upon my mother's breast i was cast upon thee from the womb thou art my god from my mother's belly be not far from me for trouble is near for there is none to help and we talked about the living creatures in the last video the created elohim the created Elohim. That's why they call them living creatures. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces. And every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. Uh, it's not brass, it's bronze. They were in the Bronze Age. King James turned bronze into brass. So think that through. So when they talk about brass, you, you know they're talking about bronze. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 12. And they went, everyone straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning they can move at the speed of light as fast as lightning think that through for a second ezekiel chapter 1 verse 19 and when the living creatures went the wheels went by them these are called the alphanim right the wheels. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels, or the alphanim, were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went thither, was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. So these wheels were like animated. They had eyes. It, it's, it's a strange scene. You almost can't make this stuff up. So when it gets weird like that, you go, man, that's some heavy stuff. Uh, either he really saw that or he has a, like a really crazy imagination. So you get in the picture here. The Elohim simply means mighty ones. But there are only two eternal mighty ones. Psalms 22, verse 12. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan. Have beset me round about, they gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. Crucifixion language. The created messenger gods. So, angel simply means messenger. It's a job description. Psalms chapter 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself, thyself with lightning as with a garment. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariots. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. Wow, that's powerful. Very powerful stuff there. Psalms, this is one of the favorite. Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, ye are Elohim. That's what he's saying. And all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. He's telling these, uh, he's created Elohim of his, the sons of God. You're messing up. You're going out. Psalm 78, verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and the indignation and trouble by sending evil angels, evil messengers among them. So who's he, who's he talking to in this? Well, when the children of Israel were about to leave Egypt and Pharaoh's heart was hard, the Most High Yahweh sent angels evil angels evil living creatures evil elohim into egypt to, 
to slay their firstborn. In fact, if you go to the book of Jubilees, it talks about uh, demonic powers too. Uh, disembodied Nephilim, right? Unleashed, unchained, and given free, free reign to terrorize Egypt. So that just tells you the Most High Yahuwah, Father Yahuwah, has everything on a chain. He's, he, he's the owner of the pit bulls. You know what I'm saying? He, he's the one running it. If you read the Old Testament, it says, it doesn't say Satan brings evil. No, it says Yahuwah brings evil because he controls the evil ones. And by that, I mean, he puts a hedge around us like he put a hedge around Job. But he can also remove that hedge and allow those evil spirits to do what they want to do to human flesh. And so Egypt was on the receiving end of that, and uh, we know how that turned out. It was kind of brutal. Exodus chapter 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. King James says, I am the Lord, but the Hebrew say Yahweh, right? So it's, it's something to think about. Uh, he's, he's in control of all of this. There's no titanic struggle between good and evil. He's got a plan, and his plan is coming to fruition. And so, no, Yahweh is not the devil. <laughs> he's got control over everybody, though. Judges chapter 2, verse 11, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served Balaam, which means the Lord, by the way, and they forsook Yahweh Elo, Eloheinu of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, and followed other gods and the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked Yahuwah to anger, and they forsook Yahuwah and served Baal, the Lord, and Ashtaroth, Easter. Come on, you guys. Keep justifying this stuff. You, you're going to find yourself in the same position Israel was in, besieged on all sides, while Jeremiah the prophet is telling the king of Judah, you humble yourself, go out to the king of Babylon. And that's another story. Oh, I should do a video on that. Because Nebuchadnezzar is called the servant. And that's one of the things that pissed the king off so bad that Jeremiah called Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the servant of Yahweh. But you got to understand, what does Babel mean? Babel means confusion. But Bab El means gate of God. Think that through for a second. Yeah, he was, he was Yah's servant. Just like Titus was Yah's servant. Because the children of Israel took an oath. They signed a contract in blood, and they reneged. And so, you know, the curses, that, that other part of that contract, start kicking in. And it's no joke. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Psalms 22, verse 15, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, and the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. More crucifixion language. Now the kaiju known as Nephilim. See, we don't think about it, but there were giants in the land. Yeah, men of renown. And they defiled animals and beasts. Genesis chapter 6, ver six verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So, if you think that through, why are the angels doing that? Because they were jealous. They wanted families. They were not created to have families. That's why I say, yeah, he could have created, he created Adam out of the dust of the earth. He could have created, a, there's a lot of dust in the earth, right? He could have created a, a billion atoms, but he didn't. He said, no, I'm going to create a companion. I'm, I'm showing you how I do things. This is what I did. Out of me came my other. So we were always one, but now this other goes forth from me to create. 
the word called word or wisdom in the book of Proverbs, right? They are actual entities, not just terms. They're entities. So the word goes forth. It said, remember, we just finished reading that, that the word created all things and that the son created all things. So the word and the son are the same guy, right? Think it through. It's just that the word is what the son was before he became flesh. And that's the part some people have a hard time with. Some people don't. Some people, you know, they get that. But some people just, I don't know. And then uh, I'm just reading in the book of uh, Enoch, and uh, um, it's talking about the, the son of man, or the son of Adam. And it specifically says, and I'm going to, I'll do a video on that too. I mean, there's just so much to talk about. But that the son of Adam would rule all the earth and be seated at the right hand of the Father. The son of a man, a human man. Of course, now he's Elohim. He's, he's got eternal life. But, you know, we don't think of it in those terms. But it's, it's more going, here, going on here than meets the eye. The promises, the promise of eternal life. Well, only, Yah, only the Elohim have eternal life. So if he's offering you eternal life, guess what? Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old of renown. And of course, that word men of renown, the word renown is actually Hashem. That's the actual Hebrew word. In the oldest text, it says men of Hashem, the name. But they're not talking about Yah's name. They're talking about their own name. And so if you think about it, Christ gave you a heads up. He said, I come in my father's name and you reject me. But one is going to come in his own name. That's what all this, this thing is about. These people calling themselves men of Hashem. They come in their own name, the name. They're creating their own name. Nimrod said, let us go down to the plains of Shinar, build us a tower, and let us get us a name for ourselves. That means more than meets the eye. That, that means something. That, that, that's in rebellion to the name, meaning Yahweh. And if you think about it, yeah, we're still in rebellion to the name. Why? Because he tells you his name in the scriptures 7,000 times times and yet you're praying to God you're praying to G-O-D you're praying to the Lord hmm. I think we talked about that Baal means Lord isn't that funny and Israel was kicked out of the promised land for worshiping the Lord Baal Baal Balaam okay? think it through and what does God mean where does that root word come from that's another video um, watch my old videos, the uh, What's uh, God by Any Other Name? That series, that playlist. Go watch that because then you find out where that word G O D comes from. So, you know, think about it. Who are you praying to? Okay, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 23 And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. So for all those people talking about did the Nephilim survive that, no, they did not survive that. But remember, Noah was chosen because he was perfect in his generations, his generations. He was not tainted with Nephilim blood. So to start the human race over, to purge that Nephilim bloodline, he chose Noah, someone perfect in his genes. He did not have Nephilim DNA in him, but somebody did on that boat. So just like, come on, you know about DNA. They, Charles Darwin didn't know about DNA. That's why for you people who are still stuck on this, uh, this uh, uh, evolution thing, I can tell you, once you understand DNA, it is mathematically impossible for random mutations to form a whole new species. Literally, the universe is not old enough 
for that to have transpired. The odds are one in 10 to the 77th power. And that's a big number. In fact, that number is basically, yeah, it's basically infinity. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. And there, there are reasons why it can't happen. So, and scientists know this. Scientists know this. You are following people who are deceiving you. They know the earth isn't that old. In fact, I mean, they've, they've tested that theory. They brought bones in and said, oh, we found these bones. We excavated this area, and, and uh, we want you to do a carbon date test on this thing. Now, they knew for a fact these bones weren't that old. They knew these bones were about 4,000 years old, but they wanted to see what the test would come out. And you know what the test came out? They always do this. They add a couple more zeros to it. Oh, these bones are 40,000 years old. Come on, people. Come on. The only reason scientists are not telling you the truth is because the ones that want to tell you the truth, they're afraid of being excommunicated out, excommunicated out of the scientific community. Mathematicians will tell you, yeah, it's, it's literally impossible. You know, look at the Cambrian explosion, if you know what that is. Go watch my videos on uh, the, you know, on the evolutionary, uh, the evolutionary videos I did about dinosaurs and all that. We, we talk about it. Um, they're some of my first videos. Um, they're not that great, but the, the information's in there if you want to know what, what it says, you know. So let's keep moving here. Jubilees, chapter 10, verse 4. But do thou bless me and my sons. This is Noah talking after the flood. Bless me and my sons that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, these spirits, so the Nephilim, which were giants, are now spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation and let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. Wow. These Nephilim, who are now spirits, in agony and anguish, are malignant. Jubilees chapter 10, verse 49. And he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. So Yah was doing them a solid here. He said, Okay, yeah, yeah, they're too strong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send about 90% of them into the abyss with their fallen fathers. You'll only have to deal with 10% of them because. I can't make it too easy on you. <laughs> you know, you got to learn something out of this. You have to be able to overcome something before I give you eternal life. You're not going to be like them. You're going to have to overcome. You're going to have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's what the Marine Corps teaches you, right? Improvise, adapt, and overcome. So he left 10% for humans to deal with. So we might overcome, build muscle. You... It's resistance that gives you muscles, right? It makes you stronger. So I want you to think that through. Everything happens for a reason. Just stay in the faith. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahuwah, and Ashatan came among them. And Yahuwah said unto Ashatan, Whence comest thou? And Ashatan answered, From going to and fro, walking down, up and down in the earth. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. I try to keep this one a little shorter. So I was kind of speed reading there a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I thank you so much for continually supporting my content. And if you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they'd find it interesting as well. And I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continuously keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all, and a shout out to the channel members, and may everybody have a beautiful and blessed day, who's in the body of Messiah, Yahusha, Hamashiach, also colloquially called Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, and I'll see you in the next video, Shalom my family, Shalom.
Peace out. <laughs>